welcome back to another new video. I've been playing a little bit of Minecraft recently, uh, and it's actually a bit odd for me. I'm not a big gamer by any stretch of the imagination, uh, and that's actually where my problem arises. It's pretty rare for me to sit down at a computer and want to open up Minecraft, uh, and when I do, I'm almost never opening it up on the same computer, and I mess around with operating systems and hardware enough that it's not at all uncommon for me to accidentally delete the saved game file. Uh, it's not even that I'm particularly irresponsible with data, generally speaking. Uh, it's been years since I've actually wiped any really important information. I have a workflow to back almost everything up. It's just that when I'm setting up a new system or wiping a hard drive or updating an operating system or anything, backing up a saved game file is so far in the back of my mind that I usually don't even notice what I've done until several weeks after the fact. So that's the problem that I am trying to solve today. I have two equally important missions. First, to back up my Minecraft saved game so that I don't ever lose it again. If I want to start a new game, that option's always there, but I don't ever want that decision to be made for me again. Uh, second, I want the saved game to be synced across multiple locations and multiple systems so that I can start and stop playing on the same world on different computers. Uh, I actually play in the Java edition of Minecraft specifically because it's cross-platform, it will run on Windows and Mac OS and every Linux distribution I've ever tried to get it working on. So, at least in theory, this shouldn't be that difficult. Uh, I'm starting today with the Mac, just because that's my main operating system, and I'm just using this as sort of a proof of concept. Uh, I'll probably take a look at doing the same thing on Linux and Mac OS in a later video, but for now, let's just work here. One quick note that I should mention is that there are some scripts available on my GitHub page here. Uh, if you go to github.com, well, there's a link in the description, just click that. There are scripts available, you can download a little zip file, and that will make this whole process quite a bit easier. I'm gonna take a look at using the script a little bit later in the video, but for now, let's just do this manually manually so that everyone knows how to get this done. So in macOS, Minecraft's save game files are stored in library slash application support slash Minecraft. There are, are a few different ways to get to this location, but for our purposes, we're just going to open up a finder window and then up in the menu bar, I'm going to click on go and then click on home. Uh, if you're in a rush, you can just hit shift command H. In my case, this is where my finder opens by default, but you know, to each their own. Uh, the next thing we need to do is actually show hidden files. The easiest way to do this is just to hit shift shift command period. And you'll see we have a whole, like just a ridiculous amount of hidden files that pop up instantly. Uh, what we're looking for in particular is a file called library. This should be probably up here with all of your other folders, you know, applications, desktop documents, movies, that kind of thing. Uh, in my case, it's right in between fonts and library. I have it sorted alphabet alphabetically, which, you know, that's probably how yours is by default. So we'll click into library and then we're looking for application support. Uh, we're looking for the actual folder here, the one application space support. And then finally inside of here, there should be a folder called Minecraft. If you're a more adventurous or experimental Minecraft player, you'll actually probably recognize this folder. This is the folder where you have to go to drop in any resource packs or texture packs, uh, or this is the folder you have to modify if you wanna run any sort of shaders on top of the games, but it's also going to be our base of operations today. So in my case, I'm particularly interested in backing up this saves folder, which of course stores any worlds that you have, uh, and then also this resource packs folder, which is gonna store any texture packs that you might be using. In my case, the tool that I'm gonna be using to make this happen is Dropbox. Uh, any cloud service would do this job pretty well. Doesn't even have to be a cloud service. You could use GitHub uh, or some sort of home network setup or any number of other solutions. But in my experience, Dropbox's desktop app is very good. It reliably uploads and downloads information quickly, works well across operating systems. It has Linux support and it offers you two gigs of free storage, which should be plenty for what we're trying to store. Uh, one thing you might keep in mind, this might be a deal breaker for some people, is that as of the date that I'm recording this video, you can actually only authorize and use the Dropbox app on three separate computers at one time. Uh, there are workarounds. They don't require very much creativity at all, but for what it's worth, I that's barely ever a problem I run into, you know, so. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and copy over this saves folder and this resource packs folder to my Dropbox. Uh, in my case, I'm just creating a new folder called Minecraft where I can then grab both of these folders and make a quick copy. 
And now we can actually go ahead and delete these two folders from our original Minecraft directory. Now that seems a tiny bit sketchy, I know, but just keep in mind, we have a backup right here in our Dropbox folder. Worst case scenario, we can just copy and paste those files right back where we got them from. But what we're trying to do right now is actually create a symbolic link between these two locations. And to do that, one of the locations needs to be empty. The way that symbolic links work, are pretty simple. Uh, we are creating a link from one location to another, duh. The difference between a symbolic link and any other type of link that you might use is that a symbolic link will only write to the original location, the Dropbox location in this case, but it will be read as the original file in whatever location it's placed in. Uh, so in order to have our Minecraft save synced, we need to store the actual data itself in Dropbox and just link to that file in our Minecraft directory. This link will behave as if it's actually there. So data is still going to be written. It's just going to be written to our Dropbox directory rather than the Minecraft directory. So uh, the easiest way to actually create a symbolic link is to use a terminal. I know uh, there are some third party apps you can download if you want, but this isn't so bad. The program that we need to use is called LN or link. You know, it's a, it's a command line app, so it's abbreviated. Uh, this is just an app that will create a number of different types of links. So all we need to do is type in LN dash S to say that we want to create a symbolic link. That's how you use the program. Uh, from here, it's just going to require two inputs. First of all, the original location of the file, and then the location where we want to output the link. Uh, so in our case, the original location is going to be this Dropbox folder. Now, if you remember, the way that we got to our Minecraft directory is we went up to go and then went to our home directory, and that's where this library file is stored. But conveniently enough, it's also where the Dropbox folder is stored. So all we need to do is type in a tilde slash. Uh, a tilde, if you're not familiar, is the key. It's like a little squiggly line. It's usually right below escape on most keyboards. And all this signifies is that we are in the home directory. That's where we want to start. And that's slash users slash your users username. That's just the directory where all of these things are stored. Uh, now, fair warning before we get really into this, the syntax here is actually pretty specific. Um, so do yourself a favor and type it exactly as I am. Uh, you can also copy and paste from the description. Uh, but anyways, now all we need to do is type in Dropbox to say that we want to go into the Dropbox folder. And then we need to type in Minecraft to say that we want to go into the Minecraft folder in our Dropbox. And then we'll just select the saved directory here. Now, again, the syntax here is very important. So make sure that this slash after the word saves is there. Uh, a lot of times if you just type it and then hit space, the terminal will delete it for some reason. I don't know why that is, uh, but just make sure there is a backslash after the word saves. And so now what we're saying is we want to link Dropbox slash Minecraft, and then we're selecting this saves folder. Uh, now we need to select an output location. So in our case, we're going to once again, start in the home directory. So we'll do a tilde backslash, and then we want to select the library folder. So we'll do uh, library backslash. Then we want to select the application support folder. This is slightly more tricky uh, because the terminal does not handle spaces very well. Uh, so what we have to do is we have to type a forward slash and then the space, uh, which I know that looks quite odd, but that's just how it works. Uh, and and then once we're in the application support folder, we want to then move into the Minecraft folder. So we'll go ahead and type that out. Uh, and then we just need to give a name for the link that we're creating. So we're just going to call it saves, no backslash at the end this time. Uh, now, assuming this is all done right, we can hit enter. This will take half a second. And you'll see we immediately have a new file over here in our directory called saves. It's gonna look a, basically like a folder, but it'll have a little arrow icon on it. And if we were to click into the folder, you can see that it's actually just directing us to that location in our Dropbox folder. Uh, this is actually exactly what happens when the Minecraft application tries to access this folder as well, rather than reading from its saved game location where it likes to store it, it's gonna read that link and it's just gonna read from our Dropbox instead and write to our Dropbox instead. Uh, so now we can just do the same thing for the resource packs. Uh, if you hit the up arrow in a terminal, it will just repaste in the last command you used and then we can just change the word saves to resource packs in both of the locations where that is. You can just navigate through this with the left and right arrow keys. So I'll just change that to resource 
packs and resource packs. Never a bad idea to copy and paste with the terminal uh, if you're unsure if you're spelling something right or whatever. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And then assuming we did everything right, once again, we have a new link called resource packs and it's going to link straight to our Dropbox folder. It may not actually be immediately apparent, but we've actually already solved both of our goals here. Our saved game is backed up in our Dropbox folder. Yes, so we're never gonna lose access to that. I never have to worry about losing a saved game file. Again, there's no easy way for us to get rid of this. But this also enables syncing between multiple devices. All I have to do is go onto any computer I wanna play this on and do this exact same process with the links. The Dropbox desktop app, like I mentioned earlier, is great. It usually syncs in a matter of seconds with relatively small file sizes like these saved games. And I don't have the best internet in the world so I mean I can't imagine this would be a real problem for anyone but uh, as I mentioned earlier I have tried to make this a little bit easier if you don't want to get into the nitty-gritty I have created a batch script which you can easily download and we'll go ahead and take a look at that if you go to the github page there'll be a download link right here that you can just click on and download you can also go over to like releases and then if you hit assets the same zip file will be there you just need to download the zip file doesn't really matter uh, I'm just gonna save it probably to my downloads it'll download like basically instantly this is a ridiculously tiny file then we can just click on it to extract it it'll open up a new folder here and if we go into the folder we're gonna have two things uh, a little readme file with just some basic instructions and then an executable file called setup uh, one thing I might mention is that you have if you have any kind of issue with this file right here uh, what you can do is you can just drag this onto your desktop uh, and I'll actually probably let me see if I can turn my desktop icons back on and then what you can do is you can just open up a terminal window and I'll just type in chmod plus x a tilde slash desktop and then select that setup file and if we hit enter that should fix any kind of issue you might have uh, you probably won't have an issue but if you just try to click on like the executable and it doesn't open up or do anything this should fix any problem you might be having now uh, that being said if we do go ahead and click on this executable uh, it's going to say oh hey you can't open because it's from an unidentified developer that's fine just go into system preferences and then click on security and privacy right over here on the general just click open anyways and it'll trip a bit and then it'll open up a terminal window and it'll be doing some stuff. You'll see we get a prompt here to ask us what uh, storage solution we're using. As I mentioned, I'm using Dropbox, but I did I do know for a fact that Google Drive and pCloud Drive store files basically the exact same way. Uh, so I've also added support for those as well. If you're wanting to store your saved game in Google Drive or pCloud, all you need to do is copy and paste whatever solution you're using. Do copy and paste though, because as I've mentioned, the syntax is weird, spacing is weird. Uh, I don't want anyone to take any chance of accidentally messing this up. Uh, so I'm just going to copy and paste Dropbox and then I will hit enter. And in my experience, this is gonna take like 10 to 20 seconds max and you're done. Uh, it'll say process completed. Uh, and then if we were to open up our finder windows again, you can see we have the exact same process, two links in our Minecraft directory and the actual files are being stored in our Dropbox directory. Uh, if we were to go over to our documents folder, this app also makes a little backup here, uh, just in a folder called minecraft.old and it saves the resource packs and the saved files there just as a backup in case anything happens to go wrong. But of course the most important thing is if we open up Minecraft again, we'll be able to play on all of our saved worlds no problem on any computer for forever. Thank you everyone for watching this video. Uh, I'll see you next time.